Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, introducing Fluid Ninja Live 1.4. Please check the changelog available at the project homepage. And on the first page you will find a list of new features. And the main feature is a new volumetric system. If you have a look at the manual, chapter 24 is updated. So we have three volumetric systems right now in Fluid Ninja. The Unreal Native Volumetric Fog and Clouds and this new system which is labeled Volumetric Smoke. Here uh, you could compare the features of these systems. Shortly getting through, Volumetric Clouds is a really nice remarged system in Unreal Editor, built-in feature, but it is up in the sky and it is very hacky method to get it down to the ground and have it in multiple instances so it is made for the sky and we are not going to use it on the ground level yet. Um, Volume Fog is somewhat better because you could place it in multiple instances on the ground but it doesn't contain cell shadows and the resolution is not very high also problems with the performance so uh, there are compromises that we have to make and as opposed to these two systems the new volumetric smoke could be placed on the ground and in multiple instances and it comes with self shadows and the feature is demonstrated on a level, a dedicated level, level 30. Uh, if you have a look at this thing and compare it uh, to the volumetric fog seen previously, it's obvious that uh, the self shadows has a great impact on the quality and the realism of these smoky systems. I'm moving on to the next stage again this is through three-dimensional volumetrics and as you could see uh, this glowing ball is used as a light source and it's moving and the shadows are dynamically changing So this is quite an advantage compared to the UE native volume fog. Right on. So let's have a look at all these uh, things that we have on level 30. First I switch off processing the pound. And I move on to one of the first stages. So this is where level 30 begins. And as you will see, uh, we have uh, six modes for this new volumetric smoke. One, which is performance-wise really cheap, and this is unlit. There is another method, unlit, with real volumetric noise and it's also very cheap, so you could place it like dozens on a level. And there comes uh, lightning, which could be point light or directionally light. And all these modes combined with volumetric noise. So we have like a, a volumetric system driven by two-dimensional fluid simulation combined with uh, three-dimensional noise volume advection and with self shadows. Um, this is how the thing looks like and if I get down to the ground level you could see that it has a thickness. Uh, why not? I just walk in with a pawn. Please I want my pawn. Oh sorry I'm a bit lost here. So mm -hmm. um, 
when I switch back the processor. Here we go. So, um, this is our unlit volume smoke. And you might notice that we have two containers here. One is a Fluid Ninja Live simulation container and two, uh, the blue one, this does the volumetric smoke. If you have a look at the details panel, we have a few control, um, simulation input control here. And let's see how it works. Well, Fluid Ninja Live simulation container is outputting a simulation output to a render target. If I select Ninja Live component and go to the live generic panel, here you could find this uh, draw internal render target to external and here is uh, a predefined render target. So we are writing simulation output to this render target and I'm setting this volumetric system to read the render target and I'm also setting which material it uses. If I double click the material uh, we have these main modes like lightning and noise. These are uh, basically enabling you to select between these main modes of light and unlit and noise or not noisy versions and you have uh, dozens of other control possibilities like color density and all kind of uh, tweaky features now how about changing this material say uh, I would like to have something which looks like a magical fog and the color is tweaked and the thickness is tweaked compared to this previous gray version. You could also use your mouse cursor. And I'm moving on to the next stage. So uh, you could see that this red ball in the background is used as a point light source. So we are tracking the position every frame. And this blue volume container, this one, is forwarding the light positional information uh, to the volume material and so the material is uh, calculating this uh, point light every frame and if I get down to the ground level again we could see that this whole system has a thickness so it is uh, not so sensitive to the camera angle as previous ninja systems which were flat two-dimensional or with parallax occlusion mapping which was a fake this is true 3D uh, comparing these two stages on the left and on the right is the same simulation but the right one comes with a uh, noise advection. If I uh, stop uh, moving there with the pound you could notice how this noise is uh, advected and the advection is driven by the simulation velocity field and it is giving uh, providing details to the simulation and uh, moving on to this stage um, the previous stages were lit by a point light source and in this case I'm starting to tweak these uh, sliders on the bottom right corner of the screen and you could see that uh, the system is responding uh, to directional light. All right, and so you have seen these tests and let's move on um, to a prepared level which is trying to stress test the feature. It is called, uh, <laughs> well, let's have a look at this uh, old school Mist Valley scene. Mm, just a second, I have to locate it. Yeah, it's level 12. You might remember this was the first test when we have been, well, let's say, it was a proof of concept that uh, dozens of Ninja Live containers could be used on a tiled way and it is using memory pooling and it's mm, building a seamless layer of fog. But if you get down to the ground level, it's a miserable two-dimensional plane. So you have, you have to be careful. And this scenario has been... Um, reworked uh, using this new volume fog and here we go and as you could see the 
this big moving ball is steering the fog and this fog has a thickness and we were also able to put down multiple instances of this container each reacting with the objects and uh, the pawn so I guess it's a good replacement for the legacy two-dimensional systems and it is using an unlit version of the smoke which is quite cheap and let's have a look at this guy which is uh, well <laughs> you will see uh, it is using a point lie source and multiple real-time fluid simulation containers on a tiled way and I could say it's pretty performance heavy so it's doing like 120 FPS on an RTX 2080 well I would say it's medium performance heavy it's pretty much made for uh, cinematic use and for next-gen hardware which is like 2000 and 3000 series RTX cards PS5 next-gen Xbox and of course cinematics uh, and you could see that if I'm moving to a higher point uh, the hay field the top of this sea of smoke is getting lit and it has thickness So I guess it is working as a proof of concept. It's true volumetrics driven by fluid simulation in game placed in multiple instances. So that's what we have. And I'm returning to level 30 just to have a, a final look at this red fog thing because I'm very happy about it I guess I've been um, waiting a lot <laughs> to get to this point to have true volumetric features and now our, our fluid sim is starting to get somewhere it's starting to look nice I guess so that's what we have in terms of volumetrics and returning to this list of features uh, there is a second way to put your two-dimensional fluid seam to 3D and it is using a mesh and level 10B is demonstrating this feature I'm getting there and here we go you might have seen this uh, this is the blood pool demo and if I'm getting a bit closer and switching on the wireframe view you might notice that it is an actual pre-tessellated polygonal mesh so um, once you get down to a low angle it's working fine and you could compare it to the parallax mapping version this one which from third person view looks the same but if you get down to the low angle it's just a flat plane and there is a similar uh, demonstration here you have seen the mud flow well the thing is that uh, it's a true three-dimensional simulation mesh here and we also have detail mapping which was a feature in a previous ninja version 1.3 and all kind of interaction with the fluids so this whole level is demonstrating these mesh based opaque surface fluids this is a somewhat less turbulent version of the muddy river um, the next one is like a, a wave moving through the simulation container and here's a, a, a painter so you could very easily create a Again, it's as, uh, I'm visualizing the, the mesh data. Ah, and the personal favorite is snow. You might have seen it, but let's have another look.
Well, it's as n <laughs> I would say it's medium snow like. It's, a <laughs> it's um I'm working, still working on this, and I would like to create snow and sand and stuff. Ah, oh, yeah, that's just the old muddy river. And another personal favorite, the blood pool. And looking at the mesh, it's much lower resolution because we don't need it. The details are arising from the normal map and the diffuse texture. So the mesh is there to, to make the whole thing work with low angle cameras. Um, so surely that's it. So much about uh, using three dimensional meshes. And we have two minor features added. Um, one is uh, selective edge fade horizontally and vertically. Um, why is it good for us? Well, let me demonstrate it on level 21. And this stage has been updated. And if you have a look at this, uh, this sphere, um, mapping a two-dimensional fluid simulation on a sphere could be tricky because at the poles we have serious distortions but since we have this selective fade, uh, I was able to solve it to, to make it look normal. So we have like um, the simulation is wrapped around the sphere. And horizontally, it is not fading out. And vertically, it's fading out, so it's uh, protecting the, the poles. Let's have a look at this one. The same thing happens. We have this distortion mesh, and if you have a look at the top of the mesh, no problems there, because uh, the height map, the distortion, the reflection, all things are fading out at the poles, the southern and northern poles of this sphere. So we, we could map the fluid simulation there without artifacts. Um, and there is one minor feature presented on level two. I'm not sure where. Um, yep, and this is called uh, fake self shadows. So in case you have a, a very simple two-dimensional fluid simulation, like in this case, you could make the visuals uh, richer by enabling this feature in the output material. So the whole thing looks like uh, a bit more like spatial, but it's really just a fake embossed style shadow it's a minor minor thing so that's it please have a look at the change log and the new volumetrics chapter and chapter 5 is dedicatedly dealing with ue5 unreal engine 5 compatibility please have a look at that too and that's it ah an important nuance the whole volumetrics have been moved from tutorial to the project project route. So in case if you are a legacy user, um, please notice. And in the base materials folder, here is volume smoke. It's a monstrous spaghetti of custom HLSL nodes and parameters. But that is providing the new features for volumetric smoke right on thank you for your patience and from now on I would like to focus on creating use cases so for a while I'm not planning to add new features to Fluid Ninja Live but to create examples of how to use the existing features shortly that's it and see you next time